Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast, Bone Bootcamp with Sarah Purcell. I'm your host, Sarah. This podcast, my newsletter, and all of my programs are designed to help women approach aging with confidence and courage. I'm specifically focused on bone growth promotion and skeleton safe movements in Bone Bootcamp, the course, and Short and Sweet with Sarah, the membership. In this podcast, I strive to bring you all the most current information on living your best life as you age. Let's get on with today's episode. Hi, welcome to the second episode of Bone Boot Camp with Sarah Purcell. This is my first live guest, and it's really fitting that it's Katie Lush, an old friend who was my first Pilates master trainer. Welcome, Katie. Thank you. Thanks and, for having me. Yeah. So I wanted to allow you to introduce yourself and just tell my audience a little bit about who you are. And we can even talk about how we met. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So who am I? <laughs> <laughs> um, in a professional sense, I am a Pilates and gyrotonic and restorative exercise instructor. I've owned a studio in downtown Chicago for about 17 years and used to host teacher trainings through Pilates and gyrotonics, so that's how you and I met. Yes. Um, and pretty certain we figured out it was through Physical Mind yep. a long time ago. Long so time. I was a teacher trainer with them first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so much like, you know, I feel like our careers have kind of taken similar paths. We both kind of started with... Yeah you know, a strong foundation in Pilates, but then have sort of shifted into a little bit more of the natural movement arena. And so I find I'm living in this gray area of, I still teach Pilates and I still teach gyrotonic, but the restorative exercise is now the foundation of everything that I teach. That's just a little, a little different. Yeah. And we, we both took, um, well, I didn't finish. I took the first year of Katie Bowman's training. Right. So we, d- we were on that path together, and we really um, studied biomechanics and alignment side by side. And that was um, probably my first experience with um, long-distance learning. And now we're also yeah. good at it. <laughs> I know. It's funny you say that. You're absolutely right. It was, I remember it was a little bit of a learning curve to learn virtually, right. but yeah, you're absolutely right. Now it's becoming the norm. Yeah. Now it's, it seems so easy and why weren't we doing it before? <laughs> yeah. Right. But in, in that whole process, you, I went off to look more at the pelvic floor and you became a restorative exercise specialist and It is for that reason that I love talking to you. And I want to talk to you about your approach to natural movement, which is really what Katie Bowman, who started all of this for you and I, um, and maybe actually she didn't. We, I think we have a story. You have a story about Philip Beach. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So exactly. Um, (laughs) My friend and colleague, we were going to a balanced body conference like we do every year to get our, you know, continuing education credits. And he was like, well, I basically asked him what, you know, workshop are you wanting to attend this year? And he was like, I'm going to go to Philip Beach. And I was like, who's that? Let me, you know, I'll go too. Yeah, why not? <laughs> basically, at this point, it's like, why not? It sounds like something new and different. And I knew nothing about Philip Beach and his work. And his work aligns a lot with Katie Bowman, where... He trains Olympic athletes, you know, um, natural movement processes to help build, you know, bigger leaps and strength. And he studies embryology and acupuncture and has this gigantic book. And he's just one of the wisest people I've ever met about this information. And so I'm in his workshop and I know nothing about him and there's no chairs. And I'm kind of like, where are the chairs? Did they forget to set up this pre-conference room? So I like go find a chair and I go sit on it. And then as he's lecturing, I'm understanding that he's into like floor sitting and barefoot walking. And so I'm like sliding myself off the chair so I don't look absolutely ridiculous. And I'm like taking my notes on the chair. (laughs) And then we're all like taking our shoes off eventually. Um, So it was a very humbling workshop because 
for the movement portion of it, there was so much of it that I was physically unable to do. Right. And having had this, you know, movement background for like 20 years, I was a bit appalled. Like there were so right. many gaps yeah. in my repertoire of what I couldn't do um, and a lot of holes, I think, in the education that I'd learned that um, when I was at that conference, I had another colleague who said, oh, he's a lot like Katie Bowman. And I was like, who is that? Right. And then I ended up just researching her and kind of going down that road because she offered a certification and some continuing education. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And interestingly, I had read Philip Beach's book when you brought mm-hmm. it up to me, but I had not read Katie Bowman yet. And you're the one who brought it oh, up. Funny. And that's when I went in with you for the ride. And that's, oh, that's so funny. I have his book and I have yet to finish it. <laughs> and I met, <laughs> it's so thick and dense. I know. Yeah. I'm that nerdy person who is like plowing through books. Good but, for you. It's hard. Did, it's a thick I read. I know, but I didn't get to meet him. So you got me on that one. Yeah, fair, fair. But yeah, but the interesting thing is that really gave us both this insight into what is alignment and why is what we maybe learned in Pilates yoga or gyrotonics not the same as what we're learning now. And I think for me, that was eye opening and mm. really changed um, it, it assisted me heavily as I got into dealing with my osteoporosis, that right. if I wasn't loading my hips, no wonder my hips were getting thinner, so to speak, mm-hmm. less dense. Mm-hmm. So changing mm-hmm. that was a huge thing, figuring out what exactly am I loading when I'm doing this? And I think you and I have exchanged stories of how our, our clients will talk about maybe knee pain when they're doing a squat. And now through this new lens, you and I might approach it differently. No, I, I completely, completely agree. I think, I think what's been so interesting in this whole process is if you've been teaching movement for any period of time under one particular umbrella and you have aging clients, I mean, I had clients starting in their forties and now they're in their sixties. So things change, right? Like they're probably postmenopausal, you know, maybe they've had a torn rotator cuff or you, you've just kind of, I've right. watched their bodies adjust and change. And so philosophically, I've had to adjust right. and change to sort of match them. And so I had to deliberately veer away from some of the choreographic choices that my umbrellas were falling under because it wasn't appropriate anymore. And honestly, I wasn't really seeing all these major gains that these other umbrellas like promised. Right. So um, when I came up on Philip Beach and Katie Bowman and any sort of sort of natural movement background, the underlyingness is sort of like the accessibility of yeah. it. And I 100% hook, line, and sinker believe that that's the most important thing. Like, a movement has to be accessible yeah. before, you know, then it can be effective. Right. <laughs> right. Right. And then so on and so forth. Right. And, and the same way I now teach yoga as well. And if I'm looking at, for instance, a triangle pose, I never teach the yoga alignment because it's not necessarily accessible and certainly can be quite difficult with 62 year old hips, which I have. (laughs) Right. You know, it's one of my big things for my clients is I try to get them like onto the floor to get off the floor. Right. Just one time, not as like an exercise, but I, I like deliberately do a little warm up on the ground and then we move to the equipment so that they have one opportunity where they're forced to work on getting to the floor right. and back up in like this safe environment. Because yeah, I mean, there's so much in Pilates and yoga that's sitting on the ground. And if somebody can't do that with ease, right. I'm not gonna give them those movements. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so we've t- we're we talking about the studio setting and it just sort of naturally flows for me to think about how excellent restorative exercise specialists like yourself are at getting those natural movements into everyday life. 
And so that's what I really wanted to talk yeah, about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, well, as I say, I do love the phrase that Katie Bowman has where she calls it like stacking your life. I think it's a really, yeah, she has like a Venn diagram of it in her book, but, um, I sometimes call it layering your life for whatever reason. I like the alliteration, I like it. but, um, no, it's, it's this, it, it was a philosophy that struck me really hard when, um, I had yeah. my son and he was a baby And I was also a very avid gym goer. And I had this like internal conflict of it felt weird to leave him at home either with a sitter or my husband or take him to the daycare and go and work out for an hour. And I I, like couldn't figure out how to sort of like meld the two. It just never seemed to work for me. I, I, I always prioritize wanting to spend more time with him instead. And, um, and again, no judgment to any person who, who uses the daycare services because they're amazing. Right. Um, but for whatever reason, it just didn't settle with me properly. So Katie Bowman's thought process, which I think is kind of brilliant, and I'm sure other people think this too, is you just take all the things that you're trying to get done in one day and you find opportunities where you layer them or stack them in such a way that you're yeah. checking off multiple boxes with one sort of activity. So... Right. So I stopped going to the gym and instead I put my son either, you know, in the stroller or in like a little carrier and I started going for walks outside. So I was getting nature time, um, some sunshine, some vitamin D. I was carrying him so he was heavy and I was getting some movement and some exercise. So um, I love that idea and I really try hard to think about that yeah. even now today. I mean, we're we're always like wanting more time, right? That's like the most precious resource. And so I find the only way to like get all the boxes checked is to like find these opportunities to kind of layer things that we need to get done. Yeah. And I started calling it um, a kitchen scavenger mm-hmm. hunt and I didn't really mean for it to only be in the kitchen, but that throughout your house, you can find opportunities for the things that you did, for instance, in your exercise advent. Mm. So I thought maybe you could tell the viewers about your exercise advent. Yeah. So um, assuming this is probably post Christmas time, but yeah, so I followed this exercise advent and it was the theme this year was about rotation or twisting. And It was, you know, one exercise a day and I got really silly with it where, you know, the exercise of choice was good, but I always kind of tweaked it to, you know, something that I felt was more applicable to me and the way that I'm, my lifestyle is. So, um, you know, again, it's just really simple things like playing around with like rotating your forearm back and forth. And, um, there was a lot of spinal motion built into it. That was really fun. Um, but it was all kind of, uh, I call it like pedestrian moves, right? Like nothing was so yeah. far out the box. Like a lot of it was like a seated twist, like you'd back up in the car. Um, right. And because we have rear view cameras, we're sort of even losing that as some, as an option of movement. Yeah. Um, and so we kind of have to like force ourselves to do it now. So it, it's just, it was a fun, like, I think it was like a 24 day daily videos they're all on my yeah. Instagram if you want to go back and find them and they're all labeled um there were some that I hated so I I listed this as the exercise that I hate <laughs> um but just all different ways to play around with rotation and twisting in your whole body and again all very accessible yeah. and we'll um we'll have your Instagram account in the show notes so people can look that up because I followed you doing it and I thought it looked <laughs> It was fun. fun. And I did most of that. It was fun. It was really fun. Yeah. So when you are just in your everyday life, how do you layer beyond what you've just told us? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, How do I layer? It's so funny because it's so ingrained in my daily routine at this point. I have to, like, think about. So um, I do have a very specific way I sit in the car. Um, and some people will put like some pillowing or some padding in the bucket seat. I tilt mine really far forward and I make sure that my left foot is on the flat pad that's on the floor so that when I'm sitting, my pelvis is relatively square and slightly tipped forward. That's a big thing for me. And the backrest is quite upright as long as the headrest is not pushing my head forward. (laughs) 
so yeah, smart. Right, right. And we got a newer yeah. car and it's like perfect because right. it's like further back. And I'm like, amazing. I don't even touch it. Um, we definitely do lots of walking. Um, I'll do family walks with my kids. Yeah. Um, and when I do it, I'm almost always in a barefoot minimal shoe. And I try to walk yeah. on natural terrain as much as I can. So even if we follow the sidewalks, we yeah. always tend to step like off onto the parkway or pedway. And nice. just to get some of those like variations and texture and some tree roots right. and some rocks and some changes in my feet that I wouldn't get otherwise just right. being kind of on flat and level sidewalks. I feel like those are the two, right. so good. two major biggies. The big mm-hmm. ones. Yeah. And what do your clients tend to do as their nutritious movement that they might find in their home? Ooh. Do they, they do. Back? Um, if they have some of the props, like the half foam roller, yeah. everybody loves the calf stretch. For whatever reason, that sticks yep. with most people. They they tend to do it that does. one a lot. And I tell them to put it somewhere that it's either like in the bathroom or the kitchen where it's obvious and you're going to be standing there. So then you just kind of put your foot on it. Right. The one thing that I think is really cute is... Um, just the standing alignment of kind of like what you're talking about with loading your hips with osteoporosis of just teaching people to kind of back their weight up a little bit in their heels when they are standing. And then saying when you're standing, you know, at the grocery store, standing in line or some of my clients live in high rises. So they take the elevator and they're like, I was standing in the elevator yesterday and I was backing my hips up and I'm like, that's so good. So I think those tiny little like, uh, mindfulness moments, I think, you know, are the right. most impactful because it's something that they remember to do on their own. I think it's impactful. Right. You know, so I would say more things right. along those lines, the alignment. Right. Right. Yeah. And do, do you talk to your clients about, um, rolling on balls yeah, or you know, like that? Exactly. That I, um, over the holidays, for whatever reason, I was like sending links out excessively for like some body rolling. You know, I've never gone through like a traditional course in it, but I know a lot of it just having taken a lot of classes and right. things and self massage is so important, especially right now, since a lot of people can't really go and get a massage. Oh, yeah. And so, um, yeah, I think that that's been really, really helpful. Like using the ball and the sole of the foot yeah. Um, just again, if you're not going to walk outside in a minimal foot, you know, shoe, then rolling the sole of your foot out right. of the ball is a huge, right. tremendous impact on your foot health. Yeah. The ball on my foot is a really, a really important thing for me. I spent a lot of time in shoes that weren't the best for me. And, um, really in the last 10 years, I've been able to get out of those and I'm mostly in natural shoes but all I have to do is put on a pair of high heels for maybe some a party or something of course that was last year um but but my feet will oh they need to be rolled out as soon as I get out of those shoes yeah I love the um, um the term the high heel you know, hangover I'm like I feel that I totally yeah, feel yeah. that and, and it doesn't even have to be a high heel yeah. shoe it could be something just like stiff or narrow or just something out of the norm and yeah my feet feel like they're kind of scrunched in so right i um have slowly been getting rid of all of my boots i know the chicago area and but part of it is i bought some new boots that are more flexible because i do go north and i do want to have boots on but the boots I had were so stiff. It, my feet were little bricks when they came I know. out of them. I know. <laughs> yeah. It's a whole thing, right? <laughs> like you're going to end up spending a bit it of is. money <laughs> and you're going to have to say goodbye to some really right. cute shoes. But, uh, but yeah, when I look at them, I have a hard time actually putting them on at this point. I, I have a couple pairs I'm holding on to. I pretty much never wear right. them. I stare at them because they're really pretty and that's about it. Yeah. Right. Well, and I have sons who one is married and there will be more and I have wedding shoes now, yeah. basically. That's what they're there for. Exactly. No. Nope. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Or my daughter likes to clomp around in them. So special <laughs> event. Right. Exactly. Well, I'm so glad you came on the show because I do think there's a lot of food for thought. 
for my listeners because I'm not always talking to them about stacking mm. your life. It really hasn't come up in yeah. that way. So I love that you've given them some ideas and some opportunities. And um, do you have one last maybe little thing you do around the house that you might just share as a giveaway? Um, things that I do at the, in my house or... Yeah, something, whether it's at your kitchen counter. Oh, like things, or okay, so I'm sitting on the floor, I'm like, movement. I'm sitting on the floor right now, like, on a yoga break. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, and, you know, so, when people listen to this post-COVID, I understand, I want to be thoughtful of that, but I think we're going to be in a digital world for a very long time, so when I teach, this is the room that I yeah. teach in. And there's this like big window mm -hmm. right in front of me. And I really deliberately try to take right. these eye breaks. I've been kind of really interested in eye health a lot lately. My son's got some convergence issues. I can tell my eyes have changed when I've stared at screens too long. And so I'm like always right. trying to take eye breaks whenever I can of just like, and even as we've been talking, right I've been looking up and staring out while I've been thinking and processing. And I just think that's a really smart, right. simple, free, <laughs> easy thing to do for yeah. eye health x right no equipment, no equipment. needed. yeah it's and perfect. i think it's smart to sit near a window because first of all the lighting is better <laughs> but secondly truly that yeah. you can just take a moment stop looking digital look at the real world like see the furthest object you can possibly focus on like there's a tree that i'm always looking at out here yeah i have to wait a second for my vision to like crisp up a minute and then i come back so <laughs> yeah right that's awesome. That's a great tip. I hope everybody does it and I'll go do yeah, it right we'll now <laughs> as soon as we're done. Well, thank you so much for coming on and I will make sure I gather all your information so we have it in the show Perfect. notes. Perfect. Thank you. So, thank you so much. This is me such a yeah, great podcast. thank you for coming. Yes, I'm so excited. You're so thank welcome. You. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Bone Bootcamp podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're loving the podcast, please subscribe. Also, share with a friend. I would really appreciate it. And if you're inspired, a really helpful thing to do is leave a review on iTunes or Spotify. Thank you again for joining me. See you in the next episode.